Let's talk Ellen DeGeneres on that note. She wanted to make a grand gesture to her wife, Portia De Rossi, by hiring an airplane to fly overhead with a banner that said 15 with a heart. Bad news is it was so tiny you could barely see it. <laughs> but I guess it's the thought that counts. What do you guys think? Are grand romantic gestures, even if they don't play out how you'd like, are they still something we should be doing? Are they a key to your hearts? I would say, okay, for them, yes, because she has thousands of dollars that she can waste and throw down the drain. Uh, for me, if I do something like that, you better see it. Man, <laughs> this to me is like eating at a restaurant that wasn't that good and you paid too much. Yes. You'd be like, oh, that wasn't even worth it. <laughs> yeah, that, nah. But like, do you want your man, Kelly, to do something like that to, to show you, yeah. hey, look, this is how much I love you, Kelly? Nah. It doesn't matter to you. Don't give me no grand gesture. Give me maybe a shopping spree or something like that. Yeah, you have you know what? Money. The thing is, have you ever read the five love languages? Yes. yes. It's important to know what What's your turns love right, what What's that yours? lover likes. Mine is definitely gifts. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So you gifts. want something tangible. Yeah. Exactly. And my uh, husband is affection. He likes more of the, you know, it makes touchy. it easy on your pocketbook. Oh God, don't it? <laughs> yeah. Just, like, so, give me a hug, baby. Yeah. I got all types of hugs for Christmas for you this year. I'm gonna tell you, I'm a grown woman, so I like grown woman things, yeah. meaning I need my oil changed, I need a, 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 <laughs> a, a light oil bill change. or a water bill paid. Is she talking I about need, your actual oil change? I, yeah, yeah, still like your oil I, change. Yeah. What are y'all talking about? I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, know what was going on. I don't know where you're going with it. Oil whatever change, oil not what I expect could there be? I don't know. Hey, I'm not the comedian on. here, Kelly. What do you want from me? Clearly. Okay. <laughs> the I don't know point I'm making is take care of some of these grown woman problems that I got, and I'll feel so Grown woman problems. Yeah. But back to to what Ellen did. I think too much of everything nowadays is I'm going to do the biggest spectacle, and it's not about the actual deed you're doing for the person. It's just to get notoriety. It's for so you. to go viral. So exactly. Yeah. And that's what it's becoming. I don't really like that as much. Yeah, like at the end of the day, a plane flying <laughs> with a special message to your lover, what are you really doing there except making yourself maybe look good? Now, look, I love Ellen. I don't think maybe it came from a uh, self-serving place, but I, I just don't know what you're getting out of that. Yeah. Everybody gets to see it. Exactly. flew her to another country. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I dive out of the plane with a banner on there. there you know, right. maybe. Yeah, I wasn't really feeling yeah. it either. Well, let's talk reality TV. Are you guys reality TV oh, fans? Love. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know well, I, I love Juicy You don't problem. like it, huh? <laughs> you like, she watches it. But it's got to create some comedy for you, like some of the drama that you see and stuff like that, maybe, or no? Well, why don't you like it? I, don't, I just, you know what? Mm, I'm such a serene person. Oh. I try to keep my energy levels at a certain place, and reality TV don't do it for me. Okay, well, well on that note, for we, someone got some, who likes we got some... Juicy <laughs> of Real Housewives of Orange County reunion. It aired last night. Kelly didn't watch, but a whole lot of people did. And host Andy Cohen asked the housewives about Emily's relationship with her man. Watch it all unravel. We were friends, and we had worked together, and we always stayed in touch. Would any of you guys get married without Hell testing no. the goods? Have you been telling no. them? Dude, if he had, like, a little, like, a Vienna sausage, I'd be like, no way. You want to see if he has a PhD? Just gotta see if he has a PhD. <laughs> PhD. Not about the medical degree? Yeah, not what talking does the medical that degree. <laughs> so they're talking in innuendo there, the innuendo there, but for those who are curious what the question they're asking is, would you get married without knowing what the other person your partner is like in bed? It, would you Would you ever go down that route? <sighs> well, to weigh in on my expertise again. Okay. Uh -oh. uh, well, actually, we, <laughs> me and my husband were together for ten months before okay. we ever I'm had gonna start. Sex. Your husband's not gonna oh. be a fan of the show by the time he's over. Like, he's gonna be like, wait, wait. I in mean, between <laughs> breaks, I'm like texting him like, I love you, honey, and I'm sorry that I had to I'm say that on TV. <laughs> But go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, but so we, we didn't have sex until 10 months after oh. we were together. So I didn't know what, I was in love with him before it had even become a thing. So it could have very well been a failure for me. What if it would have been me. bad in bed? Would that have changed your whole course that you were on? Or would you be like, oh, let's work at this thing, it's fine. Because you're a you cerebral person, I feel like. At this point in my life, to piggyback off what Felicia was saying, how is your finances, bro? Like, how are you know what I mean? Like, it ain't What's all the about grown man stuff. It's, seriously, because yeah. once you once you start really getting into it with somebody in the 30s and in the 40s, you start realizing the stuff that don't matter and the stuff that really does matter. Mm -hmm. And so you could be dope in bed, but then be terrible with finances. Girl. And now we in a one bedroom <laughs> with four kids having all this sex and for what? <laughs> We're for a fifth kid. That's, right, a, exactly. that's a hell of a point you made. <laughs> for a fifth but kid. Now, now, Kelly, as you paint it like that, that's a great point. <laughs>
But I will say this, though, that's another way to express yourself in a relationship. Yeah. And it's not a piggish comment I'm making in terms of the sex better be good or I'm out of there. It's not what I'm saying. But in a lot of ways, it's another way of communication, expression of love. And I do feel like it's an important component because everything can be great. But if you can't share the physical side, too, with each other, it's a lot of times what leads people maybe to go elsewhere. Not always, yeah. but sometimes. I just feel like you want to be satisfied on all fronts. Physical is an important part. So for me personally, just me. I couldn't make it work if we didn't have the physical so don't, Jordan's don't, like, don't tweet me. I'm not <laughs> saying nice speaker for everybody, but I would yeah. need the physical side. Corey, you're with me, right? But the, Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> but don't you think Corey. emotional sets up that physical, right? If you're connected true. emotionally, yeah, you're going to be on the same level yeah. physically, usually most of the time in all my relationships I've been in before. That's usually how it is. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, add to that, that chemistry. As long as, like, that chemistry is there, maybe mm. you haven't had sex yet. But, like, if you want to really jump that person's bones, like, you feel it, then I, I think you'll be okay or mm. something that you can work on at least. Yeah, well, I think Kelly represents the mature approach to it, right? Yeah. You're saying, hey, yeah. sex is great, but that's not going to push you through to your yeah. 80s when that's your, that's your soulmate really you're not. spending life with. Plus, you have to, I how think, How long did it take you to learn that? Uh, ooh. Well, we've been married eight. How years. many partners is what he's asking? No, oh, how many I'm partners? Just, no, no, no. God, no, 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 no. In the marriage, I think it took me probably like the last two or three years to really understand it because we've dealt with like some health conditions and some things that limit the sexual mm. parts of our relationship. So if that's the case, then what do you do? Do yeah. you go seek it elsewhere or do you stand by your partner and say, you know what, though you can't fulfill this particular need, I support you anyway. That's, that's huge. That's an I think that's a good point. Like you're never going to get 100% of everything. Like something's going to be lacking. Yeah. If it's good sex, maybe he don't got a good job. Like something's going to be, <laughs> that is something's gonna be lacking like where, however you spend it. Which Whichever way you want to look at it, whatever this human being looks like, it's not going to always be 100%. And Kelly. so before we sum this up, I actually, when you think about it, it's the same thing as the five love languages. Mm. When it comes down to sex, you have to figure out how to please your partner. It's not always about sex. It may just be the intimacy. It may just be foreplay. It may just be cuddling before point. sleep. It may be so many other things that can complement sex, you know, that don't have to be penetration. There yeah. you go.